Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Irish soda bread. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to make Ireland's second favorite food after potatoes. Well, actually, I guess it would be third favorite if you count beer as a food, which they do. But regardless, with St. Patrick's Day coming up, I thought I'd show you my take on this classic Irish quick bread. So let's go ahead and get started by getting our dry ingredients together. And for that, we're gonna use some flour, just regular white all-purpose flour, which you can use exclusively for this recipe. But for my version, I'm also gonna add a little bit of whole wheat flour, as well as a little bit of oatmeal. Those are just some rolled oats. I'm actually using the quick cooking version, but just regular rolled oats will work the same. And then we're also gonna need some salt, as well as some baking soda, which is one of the key ingredients here, hence the name, as well as a little touch of baking powder. And once all that's together, we'll take our whisk, and in lieu of sifting, we will give this a thorough, thorough mixing to make sure everything's combined and nicely aerated. So give that a good whisking for a minute or two, and once that's set, we can cut in our butter. So what you wanna do before you start this recipe is cut up your butter into chunks and put it in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes so it's very firm for this step. Because what we're gonna do is add that to the flour, and then take one of these pastry cutters, also known as pastry blenders, and cut the fat into the flour. And eventually that's gonna break up all your butter into nice little tiny pieces, which is gonna help give this bread such a beautiful texture. And when you first start, don't be surprised if a lot of butter gets gunked up between the wires. No problem, just keep knocking it off with your finger. And eventually after about four or five minutes, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, kind of a coarse meal. So that's looking good. And once yours looks like that, we can move on to the wet ingredients, which we'll mix up in a separate bowl. So we'll start with one large egg. And then because I'm doing a slightly sweetened version, we're gonna do a little bit of honey. And you'll see most recipes call for white sugar, but I'm not sure why. Honey works so much better here, I think. Oh, and by the way, if you have allergies, I heard you're supposed to use only local honey. Although I did see that on the internet, so it's probably not true. But anyway, I thought I'd pass it along. And then we're also gonna grade in some fresh orange zest. Although in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm actually using tangerines. Not because I'm always trying to be a little fancy, which I am, but because that's what I had around. So we'll grate in some orange and or tangerine zest, which is gonna pair very nicely with the dried fruit we'll eventually put in here. And then last, but certainly not least, we need some buttermilk. And it's the acidity of this buttermilk that's gonna react with our baking soda, and that's gonna create millions of bubbles, which is what actually causes this bread to rise. And if for whatever reason you can't find buttermilk, I will explain in excruciating detail on the blog how to substitute. And then all we need to do is take a whisk and mix that thoroughly before combining it with our dry ingredients, which is what we're gonna do next. Let's grab our bowl of dry stuff and make a little well in the middle into which we will pour the wet stuff along with some dried fruit. And I'm gonna use a combination of currants and golden raisins. And by the way, other Irish soda bread makers, stop telling people they have to dust their currants with flour before they put them in the batter. All right, you don't. That's a bunch of blarney. Pardon my language. You can just dump them right in. And then we'll take a wooden spoon and stir this together and keep stirring until a very wet, very sticky dough comes together. And I mean wet and sticky, so don't be scared. Just keep stirring and mixing till it all comes together, but still a little bit crumbly. And when it gets to this point, what we'll do is we'll transfer that onto a well-floured work surface and we'll finish the rest by hand. So make sure you sprinkle a lot of flour on the work surface, as well as over the top and on your hands. But as usual, only using enough to allow you to work with this without it sticking to everything. All right, if we introduce too much flour, it's gonna get dry and tough. So be careful. And all we're trying to do here is form this into a large, very soft dough ball. But before we do that, we're gonna give it a very brief, I hate to use the term kneading, because we're not really gonna knead this, but before I form the ball, I like to kind of press it down like this. And mostly what I'm doing here is testing that I have enough flour. And while it is very, very soft and very, very sticky and very kind of annoying to work with, I am able to fold it like this. I'm just gonna fold one edge this way, one edge that way, and then sort of bring the ends in like this to form, as I said, a large, soft dough ball. And yes, I did that kind of quick, which is the point. So thank God for the rewind button. So if you need to go watch that a couple times, go ahead. And then once we have our initial dough ball formed, we're gonna go ahead and cut that in half because this recipe makes two loaves. And then using just a little more flour, again, only enough to keep it from sticking to things, we will form each half into its own little round loaf. And all we're trying to accomplish here is to get something that's kind of round with a relatively smooth surface. So if you have any giant bubbles or cracks or crevices, like I had right there, kind of work those out. And like I said, we'll just form that into kind of a semi-smooth round ball shape. And I should mention perfection is not important. When these come out of the oven, they look amazing. So as usual, I don't want you to stress too much. 
And once we've formed our loaves, we'll simply transfer those onto a lined baking sheet. I'm using a Silpat, but parchment paper works great. And then once we have those panned up, I like to do one extra little optional step. While my oven is preheating, to 375 by the way, I'm going to let these sit and rest for 15 minutes. And while these are not going to rise up like a yeast bread, you will see them swell up just a little bit as that baking soda reacts with the buttermilk and those bubbles start to form internally. And then before they go in the oven, one of the most important steps, we need to slice an X on the top of each loaf. And for that, I'm going to use a giant serrated knife that I'm going to wipe off after each cut. And we're doing this for three reasons. One, it's decorative. Two, it has the proven ability to ward off the devil. And third, and most importantly, by cutting through that now sort of dry surface into the wet dough, that's really going to aid in the initial rise as this goes in the hot oven. All right, so kind of a big deal. And please make sure you're cutting down in far enough. Okay, you're the Crosby, Stills, and Nash of your Irish soda bread dough gash. So make sure you're cutting down in at least a half inch. And then once those loaves have been X'd, we can go ahead and transfer those into the center of our preheated 375 degree oven for 45 minutes or until they look amazing. Check it out. That is some gorgeous soda bread. It should be beautifully browned and also way too hot to eat. So don't even think of slicing in. I know it's tempting, but if you slice it now, a lot of moisture is going to escape and you're going to have a drier loaf. And you don't want a drier loaf, do you? Of course not. So let it cool. But then once it is, we're ready to slice in. And they say a perfect soda bread is as rare as a four-leaf clover. But that's not true. Four-leaf clovers are much more common. But I am happy to report we beat the odds and this was absolutely perfect. I mean, look at that grain. This came out so light, so tender, not dry at all, which is the fatal flaw of a lot of soda breads. And then once we have that sliced up, I'm going to serve mine as tradition would dictate, slathered with copious amounts of Irish butter. Yes, I actually went out and bought Irish butter because I am that person. And yes, I know green was not the best choice color-wise to show off this gorgeous slice of bread. But on the other hand, it did have shamrocks, so I went with it. And once that was properly buttered, I gave it a bite. And it really was tremendous. I mean, perfect texture aside, I just love the flavor, the subtle sweetness from the honey and dried fruit, playing off that little bit of tanginess from the buttermilk. And by the way, because we made it right and only used tiny amounts, there is absolutely no aftertaste of baking powder or baking soda. So you're not going to have to worry about that. But anyway, that's it. My take on Irish soda bread. I mean, I don't want to saint patty myself on the back too much, but this really did come out great. And I hope you give it a try very soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.